The results of the last presidential and governorship elections in Kwara State dealt another blow to the Saraki dynasty. Unimaginably, the governorship election became the second successive electoral defeat for the former Senate president and the living head of the Saraki dynasty, Dr. Bukola Saraki, since he inherited the structure of his late father. Now, the election, which returned Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak uh, to power for a second term, left Bukola Saraki, led PDP, uh, was only a state parliamentary seat out of 24 in a near repeat of the 2019 Otogate, which is enough is enough tsunami, where the All Progressive Congress had a clean sweep. According to a political scientist, the election is gone and governance will commence on May 29. Now, one of the mistakes of the Saraki dynasty uh, may have been um, that um, they went into their shell immediately after the, they lost the 2019 election and waited till another election was around the corner to come out. Well, uh, joining us to discuss this uh, more is Biodo Shomi. He's a public affairs analyst. Mr. Shomi, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Yes, um, th this um, th it might not be the same, um, you know, a pedestal, but this looks to me like a um, Bush dynasty, if we were com com comparing it to the American, um, you know, system. But um, we've seen um, the father of this man create a dynasty, a political dynasty of sorts, where a lot of people are querying if it's dying off. Uh, or they're losing steam over, you know, over the years, especially with the big blow he received again after the just concluded elections. But let's just throw back a bit to uh, the father of the former Senate um, President, um, Mr. Saraki. Um, wh wh how do you think that he gradually got to where he got to, to be able to have uh, such a dynasty in Kwara State? And how well have his children held uh, uh, up that dynasty so far? Yes, um, what has happened to the Sarakis is in line with the loss of social development. Um, it's not strange. Um, every good thing comes to an end at a point in time. Um, it reminds me more of the uh, Kennedy family in the United States, um, uh, which is a journey that traversed through leadership of the country down to Edward Kennedy himself, being in the Senate, um, in the Congress in America, to the extent that only do you hear the Kennedys anymore. Mm. Um, they have actually led the scene before the Bush, the Bush, Bushes uh, actually took over. Mm. Now, with the Sarakis family, which started with the father, um, who was known to be a philanthropist and um, um, also a politician, um, he started his political career and he became the leader of the Senate. When he became the leader of the Senate, of course, he was well known prior to that time. Um, and uh, uh, he was also keeping the company of the powers that be mm. in Kwara State at that time. And he was able to build a strong dynasty, political family, in a way that without the Sarakis backing, you hardly can become anything in Kwara State politics. But at a point in time, we had this. Um, challenged for power from the son. Uh, Bukola Saraki actually challenged the father and he won. That was how he became um, um, the inheritor of that very dynasty. Mm -hmm. Of course, along with him, you still have his Saraki sister who is now in APC and you have his cousin, Okwe, um, who is also Okwe Saraki, who is also in APC. But along the line, something snapped with the Otoge rally. The Otoge rallying cry was so powerful to the extent that the Sarakis were caught sleeping mm. and um, they lost power to uh, the, the current uh, incumbent governor, Abu Razak. Mm. Upon assumption of office, um, Saraki was not given a break uh, in the sense that uh, is either there were allegations bordering on financial malpractices or the, a major robbery incident, you know, which uh, one way or the other, some aides of Saraki were linked to it, you know, became so fatal to his political dynasty in a way that many of the um, his uh, lieutenants decided to pitch tents with the opposition. That is with the um, ruling APC party in Kwara State. Mm. Since then, he has, even though he kept protesting his innocence, 
and he has not been found guilty or indicted in any court in relation to that robbery incident that happened in Ofa. Um, but it was politically fatal enough to the extent that Saraki did not have the time, you know, to even think of building his war machine because most of his associates were trying to keep some distance. So that was when the, the, the dynasty started um, unraveling uh, up to the last election. And at the last election, what made it worse for Saraki was the Tinubu Badwangon effect, you know, in Kwara State, which is largely populated by the Yorubas. And they felt they had to um, align, you know, and support um, Tinubu. The other factor is also, you know, the, the, the family. The family got splitted. Um, you have um, the, the female Saraki and the cousin, Okwe, you know, moving to APC while Bukola was left on his own mm. um, with um, on his return back to PDP. And in addition to that, there was also the role of Lai Muhammad. Lai Muhammad also played a major role in the sense that he tried to fight a battle uh, with the governor. At a point in time, many people in Kwara State disagreed with Lai Muhammad and saw him as a, a kind of trying to wage a battle and align with the Sarakis. And because of that, um, uh, Bukola Saraki it affected his uh, political fortune to some extent. Mm. And all these factors, you know, culminated in this second defeat of the Saraki family. Mm. In reality, we are beginning to see the end of that dynasty, in my view. Wow. There, there are some pundits who have said that um, he, had a, he had made a major blunder uh, that, you know, w which was the beginning of the crash. But then, some are also saying that maybe if he decided, you know, to change um, or rejig his leadership style, uh, that um, this might, one way or the other, you know, bring him back to the top. But what kind of change of strategy do for his dynasty? Uh, just as you said, could this really be the end? Yes, Bukola, unlike the father, uh, Bukola is a very good um, politician, very solid, but he lacks the dexterity. You know, the political dexterity of the father. Uh, Bukola is not consultative in his approach like the father. Uh, in the case of the father, I remembered you know, people like Dr. Amuda Luku and so many other people, Aboluri uh, Egbe in Kwara State, the Madawaki of Iran. So many of them are routinely consulted, you know, by Dr. Bukola Saraki. No, sorry, by the Dr. Saraki, the father, mm -hmm. before making up his mind, Dr. Lishola Saraki, on who to back. And quite often, he tends to back the popular candidate, a candidate that seems to be more acceptable to the people. In the case of Bukola Saraki, Bukola Saraki, you know, wielded the big stick and uh, decides, um, although it would be unfair to say unilaterally, but he tends to have his way and he does not have the same deft touch of the father in trying to get carry the people along he's seen rightly or wrongly as being the one taking the decision um in in a way that they did not think um he was um uh, consult consulting enough and that was a major problem for many people they could not do otherwise other than to tell Bukola what he wants to hear yeah. um so at the end of the day all these factors you know actually affected them um, Bukola a lot, uh, mm. but he's a very strong, solid politician. Unfortunately, he has lost touch with the realities in Kwara State. Mm. Uh, this would not be the first time that um, Senator Bukola Saraki will be jumping ship, like you said uh, in your opener. Uh, he has moved to the APC and back to the PDP. Now, of course, the PDP has back to back lost uh, to the um, ruling party, which is the APC. Um, Again, still looking at ways that he can, you know, claw his way back to the top. Um, do we see him aligning with the president-elect in, um, you know, years to come uh, to one way or the other find his way back into, uh, you know, the steam of things? And, and how will this help him to get back all of his loyal men or loyal soldiers? Yes, um, that is not impossible. But the Bukola, I know, probably will push you know, for a rebirth of the big PDP. Uh, because PDP needs to rebrand as a brand. 
Um, without doing that, they may not be able to regain lost ground in the south, south, southeast, and southwest. Mm -hmm. And that could be fatal for any ambition to rule the country. Because PDP on its own has not proven to be incapable of even winning overwhelmingly the, the, the votes in the north. So therefore, there may be the need to rebrand the PDP, which I suspect Bukola Saraki will push for. If he's unable to achieve that, he probably may end up feeling frustrated and going back to um, APC. I cannot see him going to join the Labour Party uh, because these are guys who are used to power. Uh, they like to be where the power is because mm -hmm. for, 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 for so many reasons. Uh, they, he has to have the ability you know, to dispense like JC. It was a different thing when he was the Senate president. He was still able to do, you know, dispense like JC. But this time around, being out in the cold, and if PDP fails to rebrand, I cannot see Saraki remaining in PDP. It probably would tip more with the other two Sarakis um, in APC at the end of the day. Let's quickly talk about his shot at the presidency. We've seen him tried many times. I think in 2017, uh, he pushed to um, also uh, be a presidential candidate in the PDP. Um, of course, they all ended up, um, you know, being won um, by Atiku Abubakar, who again, uh, this time around, was given the ticket, even amidst all of the row and um, the misunderstanding within, within the party. Um, do we see him doing it again? And does he really even stand a chance or uh, have a shot at the presidency, and does he have the notoriety across the board, and I'm talking about the north, south, east and, west, uh, east and west of the country, to be able to pull that weight for the PDP? Or do we see him just, you know, taking a back seat and pushing for someone else to run? Yes, Saraki uh, is uh, quite a very ambitious man. Nothing is wrong with that. And um, he has tried to contest um, the powers of PDP, you know, and um, he, he, he couldn't make any headway there. Um, it's not impossible that he's still not seeing the ambition to be the president of the country. Because what else remains for him after being the two-time governor of Kwara State? And in addition to that, he had been the number three citizen in the country, the Senate president. So well, the only two things that may be attractive to him is either vice presidency or presidency. Mm -hmm. So within this context, um, is probably because a state is located in the ge geographical zone known as the north, even though it's not central, um, is more likely uh, going to end up having to try and pair with somebody in future elections. Mm -hmm. And that depends on whether he stays within the PDP. If he's staying within the PDP, um, he probably will aspire to, uh, to, to team up with a candidate from the south, um, because I cannot see the not, you know, representing somebody from for, from the north, you know, to challenge Inumbu in uh, in the next election. So we are likely going to have PDP now uh, fielding somebody from the south, but you might have Saraki wanting to do the northern backup. Whether this will be acceptable, you know, to the caucuses in the north, particularly in, particularly in the core north, which is the northwest, um, is a different matter because there are so many powerful gladiators. Um, from that zone, who may also want to pair up with somebody from the southern part of the country to challenge Nubu in 2027. So all these are still up in the air. A lot of it depends on uh, what the PD PDP intends to do, whether they are rebranding, and then what Saraki intends to do, whether to stay within the PDP or to move to APC. Moving to APC will spell you know, a, a death knell. It's, it's like a death knell. Uh, for his presidential ambition, because uh, Tinumbu is still there and is from the south. And then you have um, Shetima, who is also from the northeast. Mm. So there's no way um, the party would dump um, Shetima for his Saraki. So if he still has the presidential ambition or to be in the presidency, he probably will stay within the PDP and fight to get um, uh, PDP uh, to make it a, a, a new or a born again party. <laughs> well, all that remains to be seen, but I want to say thank you. Biodo Shomami is a public affairs analyst. Always a pleasure to have you uh, dig up some history and politics. Thank you very much for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, great. Well, that's the show tonight, and I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. Don't forget, um, violence is never the answer to solving our problems in this country. We can only solve all our problems in a peaceful manner. I'm Mary Annika, and have a good night.